Okay, so I'm going to go back to this part that we just recently programmed the uh, 3D offset pocketing on. Now, once I've programmed uh, the offset pocketing toolpath, I would like to go back and clean up uh, the scallops in some of these areas where you have the vertical surface uh, intersecting with the uh, sculpted surface in the bottom floor. So we would want to go back and refinish it or remachine it. And uh, a good way to program this would be to use uh, one of these remachining methods in here. And I'm going to uh, use the pencil tracing operation in here. So it automatically uh, would determine, uh, based on the model, it would determine the bitangencies for the pencil toolpath to create a, a cleanup pass around it. Now, in this particular case, I could either be selecting uh, a curve edge region as my drive geometry, or I could be selecting a flat area, or if I do not pick any region, it automatically determines the toolpath for the entire geometry that you have visible in here. Now the ideal use of a pencil trace for a tool would be either a ball mill or I would recommend going with a corner radius tool. Flat mills are not recommended. A uh, ball mill is uh, ideal for generating a pencil tracing toolpath. Uh, I, I would uh, uh, also uh, want to explain that uh, the pencil trace toolpath uh, Uday mentioned it a while ago, um, means it computes all the bitangency points. What we mean by that is uh, we are looking for two po points of contact for the tool. So typically uh, this would be on a valley, in a si valley situation where the tool is touching on one side, uh, on, the, uh, you know, on both sides basically. So we're looking at two contact points. And that's what we call bitangencies. Bi uh, these typically would be, as the picture shows, would be in a valley. And so this is a very nice toolpath uh, for cleaning out valleys of that nature. And again, the reason we would not recommend a flat mill uh, is because these bitangency situations uh, seldom do occur with a flat mill. But having said that, you could use the flat mill for, uh, you know, flat areas. So if you have a flat surface, and then you have uh, another wall abutting that flat surface, yeah, you could use a, a flat cutter to come in and clean out that, uh, you know, that valley. So there are some uses where, some places where you could use the flat mill for pencil trace. Go ahead, Uday. Thank you, Joe. So for this particular part, um, I'm going to use the ball mill in here for the pencil tracing operation. And in the cut parameters, I could choose the cut direction as either climb or conventional. And we'll also have, go over some of the advanced parameters in here where you can uh, choose to split the cuts where you can uh, only apply the pencil trays for flats only or you could do steeps only, steep areas only or you could do a combination of both flat and steeps sections. And you can specify the cut split angle in here to define the flat and steep. Now without having to split the cuts, I'm going to go ahead and generate this tool path in here. And as Joe pointed out, it automatically identifies those bitangencies and creates your pencil tracing tool path right there. And there it is. Now with this pencil tracing tool path, you have several additional options. Then, uh, Uday, can you put a tool in one of those tool path points and show the bitangencies? I think that'll be illustrative. Sure. I'm going to go ahead and use the toolpath editor in here. And I'll just go ahead and uh, place it right in over here using the toolpath editor. So you can see where right there. Yeah, as you can see, the tool is touching that bottom surface as well as on the on the side, the so side wall is touching that. Uh, we don't display the contact surface, uh, but it is uh, touching on both sides. So now, um, to add a few more additional passes, uh, we could choose the option to do multiple cuts and set the number of cuts. So by setting the number of cuts to one, it's going to add one additional pass on each side of the uh, pencil trace tool pad on each side of the, you know, by tangency, one over towards the, the steep wall and one over towards the floor. So you can specify the number of cuts and specify a step over in here. So when this is specified, 
it'll add one additional pass on uh, each side of the pencil trace. So this would end up giving you a much um, you know, nicer finish on the part if you have left more material on the previous operation. You can see that with this pencil trace there's one extra pass on each side of the pencil trace. So the, the do multiple cuts will allow you to add multiple passes on either side of the pencil trace. Now, uh, for our users who are running the Visual Cam plugin in SolidWorks, uh, you have the same, um, you know, set of machining operations, and they work exactly the same. You can either be selecting your drive geometry as a chain of face edges. So I have the exact same model in here with the same set of toolpaths as we programmed in our plugin for Rhino, and we also have the same in uh, the plugin, the standalone system which is Visual CAD CAM. So you have the exact same methods, the, the cut parameters, the options that are available to you are exactly the same. 